gas works, the deserted, abandoned works, got into the news in uh, big in 63 because the city had decided to buy, acquire that site from Washington uh, Gas Company. And uh, so it was in the newspapers and that quite a bit. And that, I, I think that's probably when we sent in a proposal that we would design a park there or something. So I haunted the site. I slept around there, the sleeping bag, and I did as much research as I could. And, and I realized, man, this is a, this is something. I, I got to, got to save this. And at first, my thought was, well, I'll save the one tower, the one big tower out at the end, the mother tower, I call it, and. Uh, uh, so then I began to expand my ideas and, and I, it, like in site planning, one question I always teach and ask is, okay, you're on this site, what is the most sacred thing on this site? Or maybe it's a contextual thing, maybe it's around the site. I just kept dreaming about the site. I had no rock outcroppings and no sacred trees. <laughs> Not much there except this this wonderful iron totemic these structures. So the more I was around there, the more I bonded with those things and thought, yeah, I got, I gotta save them. And like with the towers, those tanks. I mean, if I'm wrong, I can always take them down. So we began to get uh, support groups behind us. And the uh, superintendent of parks, he was really worried about this. But he kept saying, well, go, out, go a little further, but I know the mayor is going to buy into this at all. So I began to lecture and give strategies and develop concepts, do the site planning as we're taught to do. Uh, Paul Goldberger came to town. We took him out, showed him. He wrote a great piece. This park could be the masterpiece of Seattle. Yeah. So the battle is being joined, but finally uh, it, it became a political issue. And I had to uh, present the concept now, no plans yet, the concept, the approach to the open, open public meeting. And there are six or 700 people in the Eames Theater Anyhow, the council uh, stood stood by, and within a week, they unanimously supported, voted to approve the approach. So then, I had the big thing of uh, remediation on the site, and that's when the, my my chemical soil consultant Richard Brooks taught me about bioremediation. So we made uh, three demonstration plots, 100 square feet, 10 by 10, planted different things. It worked. A major accomplishment there, uh, still this is a little about technique, I guess, was a massive grading there. And we did have, uh, we didn't know where the worst polluted soil was. So we did take that out and, and start to mound it up. And there's another, another trick there that this site was artificially made. It used to have a soft margin by the lake. In fact, the lake used to come way in where the towers were. So we decided to cut the site down as you would find in nature nor normally, you know, to a quiet stream like that, no big cuts. So we sloped the site down in the morning bowl and the midday bowl and took all the more soil and piled it up there. Another great Japanese, Asian principle, dig here, pile there. I mean, it's really simple. Anyhow, but the trestles that we retain, the concrete haunches, those trestles, uh, that would be a perfect way to enter through there and so on. And then you would split out and go to in your various things towards the great mound or to the great uh, family of towers 
or you would go over to the play barn, picnic barn, play barn, structures that we renovated and saved. And uh, so there's a, a great uh, play of, of spaces, but openness. The thing you don't get very much in Seattle because of the nature of the city and, and in forested areas of trees and all, you don't get very much sense of openness of sky and openness. So this, this park does that, especially if you go up the Great Mound up to the top of that, get a sense of light and air and just exuberance. And, and uh, you can get to the water now. That's one of my universals. You want to see water, you want to be able to get to it, and if possible, get in it while they still try to keep you out of the water down there. But, uh, and again, there's that yin yang. You, you, in the site, you dig as deep as you can dig and you pile as high as you can. Prospect Refuge, the Friends of Gasworks Park. That was um, a group that my wife set up of friends and allies of the park, and uh, we wanted to exert a kind of guardianship. I've always been fearful that the towers would be taken down at some point. And uh, so uh, the, one of the things that we did, they did there, was to set up the um, bylaws and what they're all about. And, and then uh, they um, got uh, one of the board members, is a, a woman architect, historian, and uh, so she worked with with us and so on, and we got, got the uh, site landmarked by the city and the state and the federal government. It is the culmination of my projects, that's for sure. It's my um, opus maximus, and it will be because it's public for the public, and it's strong farm. It was quite prototypical, and I think it broke new ground for people's ideas of what parks and recreation and uh, even landscape architecture. It has a lot of my uh, trademarks, a strong earth farming and kind of a holistic approach, I guess, I hope. I'm pleased with it, <laughs> yes. <laughs>